we could invest aspects of our own relationship into this and, th and our own understanding into these characters, you know, even though Stanley would say, well, that's just an added bonus, that that was definitely something that he counted on and wanted, but never, never abused that at all, ever, not once. As an actor, you set up there's reality and there's pretend and those lines get crossed and it happens um, when you're working with a director that allows that to happen. And it's a very exciting thing to happen. It's a very dangerous thing to happen. In the acting scenes, he worked in a way I understood very well, which is a kind of feel your way through it as you go. You have the boundaries of the scene in your head, as he did. But then he sort of gives you a little push off and sees where you go. And then he starts to correct it slowly. And then he records it on video with the tap. He, he wouldn't film it sometimes. He would record it on video. Then he would show it to us. I'd sit here, Tom would sit here. He would go through it, freeze the frame, and say, see that when you turned your head like that? Oh, he will change this. Or at the end of a take, he'd say, okay, Sydney, come here. I'd come and I'd sit down. But he wouldn't say anything to Tom. Then he would take, go through it with me. Or, okay, Tom, come here. Let's watch this. <laughs> you know, Stanley would say, look, we got to earn every scene with this character, every single moment with this character. And the two, and he knew that, you know, in times when I just get frustrated with myself and uh, that, uh, at times that we couldn't get it, you know what I mean? It was just like, you know, fuck. It just, uh, or you just know when you don't have that, it, that fire burning that day, or if I was tired, it just, you know, and I bring it upon myself, you know, because I demand a lot of myself. Stanley always was waiting for something to happen. He wasn't as interested in naturalistic acting as he was in something that, for whatever reason, surprised him or um, piqued his interest. That's when he would go, ah, okay, now we're on to something. He always would say, when we would talk about it, isn't it silly? You know, the, the cheapest part of all this is do another take, do another take. You've spent millions of dollars preparing and building sets, hiring people, doing costumes, and months and months writing a script, years sometimes. And then you get there and you quit on take five, or take six, or take seven. Isn't that silly? You don't know what's going to happen if you try three or four or five more. He would say, OK, you've done a few takes. Now you can just do what you want to do. And. And I'd heard all these stories about him being incredibly controlling and not wanting this and not wanting that. And at certain times he was very controlling. At other times he was pleased just, and particularly with the monologues, is when he allowed me just to really just get lost in Alice. And I think that's what happened. I mean, over the course of the year and a half, I just, you know, became that woman. Uh, when he had this important scene with them, he had them in the set and he watched outside on a monitor and let them go through it over and over. And it was very raw stuff. It was very, um, that's why I said they took more than their clothes off. They absolutely took their skin off. Women know that they have that power. Uh, if they're loved, only then do they have it uh, to tease.